Hello and welcome to We Poets. My name is Sally Baker and I'm the host of We Poets. We Poets is a poetry show for boys and girls between the ages of 6 and 13. So if you would like to be on the program, please have your parents or your school teacher call me. I'm always looking for new children to come. Also, if you are a dependable middle school or high school student and you would like to get a free internship as a uh, te television technician and produce our programs, I'm always looking for interns to come. And also, I'm always looking for adult guests to come and tell boys and girls and young people something about their jobs and careers. Tonight, we have a very special guest and her name is Michelle Pope. She is the CEO, Executive Director of the Alzheimer's Services of the East Bay here in Berkeley, California. And she's going to tell us all about this wonderful agency and something about Alzheimer's. And we're always looking for sponsors. We're a nonprofit organization, so we need contributions to bring you new shows. So if you'd like to fall into one of these categories, please call me. So now here we go with our three wonderful poets. And here's our first poet. Hello, young lady. Hello. Hello. How are you tonight? I'm good. Good. Could you look there at camera three and tell us your name and how old you are and what class you're in, please? My name is Violet. I'm eight years old and I'm in room 22 at Oxford School. Great. Is this your first time on TV? Yes. Are you nervous? Yes. Oh, you're going to do a wonderful job and you look so pretty tonight. Now, we're going to be, uh, our guest is going to be talking about Alzheimer's. Do you know what that is? No. Well, you'll find out when you hear her talk later on. So what's the name of your poem that you've written for us? Every Living Thing Cherished. Okay, look right there at camera three, and let's hear it nice and loud, please. Javan rhinoceros, Asian elephant, radiated tortoise, the red wolf, all critically endangered, we must try to save them. Yellow-bellied sapsucker birds, northwest beach tiger beetles, Mont Iberia eulith frogs, strange ones that barely anybody has heard of. I care because animals are part of our kingdom. We are them, they are us. Without them, we wouldn't be alive. People hunt animals as a sport. How would you like it if they hunted you? Why should we only be allies to people when we can be allies to animals too? Great, wasn't that clap? Good, let's clap. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. How long did it take you to write that poem? I'm not sure. You're not sure, but it did a, you did a wonderful job. You like to write? Yes. What else do you like to do at school? Read. What kind of books do you like to read? Mysteries. Mystery books. Oh, that's good. Now tell me, what did you do this summer, or this past summer, that was fun? Did you take a vacation? We, yeah, we went to France. Oh, what did you do at France? We went on a bike trip around. Good. Around the different towns. Oh, did you go to Paris? Uh, yes, but did we didn't bike there. You didn't bike there. Well, what did you do in Paris? Well, we kind of stayed there for three days and then the bike trip started. Oh, we went to Paris and I took 15 of our interns and we produced We Poets in Schools in Paris, France. And we had such a wonderful time for two weeks. Now tell me some more about you. Do you play a musical instrument? I play piano. Good. Where do you play at? Like well, you did a wonderful job. We're going to hear from you the second half when we hear from our guest. And thank you so much. I'm very, very proud of you. Let's give her another round of applause. <laughs> and now we have a pretty young lady, and she's going to tell us all about herself. Hello, young lady. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Could you look there at camera three and nice and loud and tell me your name and how old you are and what grade you're in, please? My name is Ashley. I'm eight years old, and I'm in... Um, Third grade. Third grade. And what school do you go to? Oxford. Good. Is this your first time on TV? Yeah. Are you nervous? Kinda. Oh, you're going to do a wonderful job and you look so pretty tonight. I'm so glad that you could come. Now, you've written me a poem, right? Yeah. What's the name of your poem? 
I wish. Okay, now you're gonna look right there at camera three, nice and loud with a great big smile, and let's hear your poem. I wish that I had, there were more fidget spinners. I would make a big fidget spinner tower. I wish that I had a trampoline. I would jump on it every single day as fast as I can. I wish for myself I can adopt a dog. I would love that dog and care for that dog every day. I wish for myself that I could have a big ice cream party. I would, I would, gosh, I would invite my whole classroom to my ice cream party. I wish, I wish, I wish. Great, let's clap. Wasn't that good? <laughs> now, do you like to write poems? A little bit. A little bit. When you've written other poems, what did you write about? What was the subject? One was this one. The other one was about, I don't know what that one was well, about. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Now, tell me about school. What's your favorite subject at school? Um, Math, reading, writing. What? Doing projects. Doing projects. What kind of projects do you like to do? Well, I like the color, and we did the little thing on the oranges. Oh, you like to color. Have you entered any of your uh, drawings into any contests? No. Not yet, but I bet you will. Now, what would you like to be when you graduate from high school and college? A singer. A singer. Oh, that'll be a good career. What kind of songs do you like to sing? Uh -huh. I don't know. You don't know, but you'll know by the time you graduate from high school and college, right? Now, what did you do fun this summer? I stayed home with my sister and my mom, uh -huh. and I think we went to church. Oh, that's good. You went to church. You like to go to Sunday school? I don't go there often. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Now, anything else you'd like to tell me about you? Do you play a musical instrument or you what? I play an instrument at school. What instrument do you play? Um... Um, Violin? No, flute or like a... Flute? I used to play the clarinet. I think the clarinet and the flute's kind of alike, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to tell me about you? No. Is this the first time you were on TV? Yeah. Well, you did a good job. You know, the first time I was on TV, I was a little nervous, too. In fact, I ended the show 10 minutes before I was supposed to. I was so nervous. But you did a good job tonight, and I'm very proud of you. Let's give her another round of applause. <laughs> and now we have our last poet, a handsome young man. So here we go. Hello, young man. Hi. How are you tonight? Pretty good. Pretty good. Can you look there at camera three and tell me your name and how old you are? And what grade you're in, please? My name is Mark, and I'm eight years old, and I'm in third grade. Good. Is this your first time on TV? Yeah. Are you nervous? Kind of. Oh, you're going to do just fine, and you look so handsome tonight. Now, tell me, what's the name of your poem, please? Home with Hearts. Okay, let's hear it nice and loud, please. Everywhere, on the streets, sidewalks, in towns and cities. They grow by the ten thousands. No money, no home, no food, no family, no love. While other people live a colorful life, homeless hearts turn gray and lonely. Homeless hearts are alone. No community, no friends. You can help. Donate money, or food, or supplies. Then, the gray hearts will be happy. They will become colorful hearts. Please help the homeless hearts. Great, let's clap. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> That's a lovely poem. Last week we had three of your classmates come, classmates come and they wrote home uh, poems about the homeless. What do you think you could do to help the homeless or you and your family or others can do to help the homeless? Donate money. Donate money. What else? Food and things they need to live, socks, shoes. That's right, because it's real bad to be sleeping out on the streets in the cold, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, now let's talk about you. Tell me something about, let's put this down. Tell me something about you. What did you do this summer that was fun? We went to other countries to visit my grandparents. What countries did you go to? Um, Spain and Europe. Spain and Europe. What did you like best about Spain? Visiting my grandparents and going in their house. Oh, good. Did you eat lots of good food there? Yeah. 
Yes, I went to Spain too. And Spain's a wonderful country. Yes. Now tell me some more about yourself. I don't know. What sports do you like? I like watching sports. I don't really like playing them. Oh, that's all right. What sports do you like to watch? Basketball and baseball, football. Good. Do you go to any games? No, not yet. Not yet, but I bet you will. Now, when you graduate from high school or college, what career do you think you'd like to pursue? Either a chemist or a movie maker. Ooh, those would be nice. Do you think you'd like to be a host like me on a TV show? Maybe. Maybe. That's good. Uh, do you play a music? Excuse me. A musical instrument? At school, we play the recorder. The recorder, good. So tell me some more about yourself, just anything you want to tell me. Well, I like also like going to the ice cream shop and where we live. We have tons of things close to our house, Ooh. Mr. Mops. What's your favorite ice cream? Um, mint chip. Mint chip. Oh, I like that, too. And after the program, we're going to have some goodies so you and your family can have some goodies. Now, anything else you'd like to tell me? This is your first time on TV, huh? Yeah. Yes. And you did a real good job. I'm very proud of you. Now, have you written any other poems? At school, yes. Uh, what were the names of your poems you wrote at school? Can't remember. One was called Guess, I think. Death? Guess. Oh, Guess. Okay. <laughs> you remember the other one? No. No? So now is there anything else you want to tell me? If not, we're going to have not our guests really. come on. Okay. Well, you did a wonderful job, and your poem was excellent. And I know you're going to be a very helpful young man to help some of the homeless, right? Yeah. Thank you. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> and now, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, don't turn off those TVs. We're going to take a quick break, and then our guest is going to come on. So we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the second half of We Poets. I'm Sally Baker, the host. I would now like to introduce you to my special guest for tonight, and her name is Michelle Pope. She is the CEO and Executive Director of the Alzheimer's Services of the East Bay here in Berkeley, California, and she's going to tell us all about this disease that affects many people all around the world and about her agency, so here we go. Hi, Michelle. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm great. I'm so glad you could come and tell us all about Alzheimer's disease and about the agency that you work for. Mm -hmm. So my first question is, what is Alzheimer's disease? So Alzheimer's disease is the number one dementia that um, is usually uh, given to individuals over the age of 65. So right now, there was a time 30 years ago where Alzheimer's disease was the only dementia that we knew about, but now there's probably about 30 different dementias that we diagnose, Alzheimer's just being the number one and solely related to age. I see. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been the CEO at the Alzheimer's Services here in Berkeley? I've been the CEO for seven years, but I've worked for the agency for 20. Wonderful. Yeah. And how many offices do you have here in the Bay Area? We have three locations um, in the Bay Area. The Berkeley is our flagship here mm -hmm. on Channing Way. We have another site in Hayward, and we have another site in Fremont. They're adult day health care, so people who are diagnosed with all forms of dementia come during the day so they... Um, their loved ones can go to work or get respite. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's only five days a week? Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. 9 to 4, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So you don't do anything on the weekends? Uh, the Berkeley Center does have a program on Saturdays once a month for those caregivers who need to go out and go shopping and things of that nature. Good, good. Yeah. Now, what is the experience of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia? 
I think that people um, experience a sense of um, alienation. They feel that their families are misunderstanding them, particularly in the beginning of the disease when they have some lucidity, and, and as that lucidity disappears, they start to feel as if they're being treated as a disease and not as a person. And that's why we are promoting it ASAP. While we know it is an incredible diagnosis to get, it's an awful diagnosis to get, that there's still a person alive there. There's a, still a person that is able to write poetry. Yes. <laughs> and um, paint and do all kinds of things. And the dementia really for us becomes secondary. We're not the family. So we understand that there's more to it for a family. But we're saying embrace this new person, love this new person, and get to know them for who they are. Great. Do you think more men uh, come down with Alzheimer's than women, or is it equal? No, actually women, um, we have more women diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but that's only because we still live a little longer than men. Yes. Um, um, the gap is, is, is uh, shortening um, over the last decade. Uh, we're getting closer to men because we now have many of the stressors that men have by having uh, jobs and caring for the home and all of that. But um, right now, it's mostly women because we live longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what images come to mind when you think of the term old age? You know, um, I grew up in a home where my grandmother was present, um, and so I think of a thriving, incredible woman who baked cookies for me when I came home from school, who mm -hmm. made cocoa so that my hands would be warm. So I don't have the same, um, the same vision of aging that maybe the modern family does. I think that um, media and, and things of that nature have us thinking that being 60 and 70 isn't a really cool thing, so we need to go buy oil of Olay at CVS to, <laughs> to look 30. Well, you know, I turned 60 last year, and I'm really glad to be 60. Yes. Um, um, I'm really happy to be the person that I am, and so I think that we need, as a country, to embrace aging in a very different way. I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world and study aging, and we really are the only country that thinks that aging is something really bad to do. Really? Oh, oh that's yeah. sad. It is very sad. Other countries, they uh, respect their, their elders. Oh, tremendously, and yes. embrace the wisdom and the, the knowledge that they have. And in our country, we have a tendency, we build more buildings to put them away in yes. than to see them in the neighborhood. I grew up in the Bronx and I always saw older people walking, doing their grocery shopping, and then we as children helped them. Helped them, yes. Yeah, so yes. we learned how to navigate our world around elders and I just think children are really missing out on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. indeed. Now, if you had a magic wand and could change one thing about dementia, aging, what would it be? Well, the magic wand would be to find a cure, but we already know that that's not going to happen anytime in the near future. So the magic wand would be to change the way we look at aging, to change the, the, the understanding that we have about aging, and to say, let's respect our elders, as many of our indigenous cultures do, and make them a part of everything that we do so that our children can learn from them and, uh, you know, and so that we can be a, a society that embraces intergenerational um, activities in our communities and in our homes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, what might we all do to change the public perception of aging and memory loss? I think the first thing is those of us that are aging um, need to be proud of our aging. Um, I don't have any grandchildren yet, but I really hope by the time they're born, I have a few more wrinkles <laughs> that they will point at. And, and you know, I recently decided to uh, let my hair go gray. Um, and so, you know, that has become a new thing for me, just looking at all this little gray hair pop out. And, and you know, I just think it's about embracing our lives and embracing this wonderful journey that life is. And when we act like every phase needs to be pushed back to our youth, we're kind of saying where we are is not a good place. Right, right. Yeah. Now, if one wanted to come by your agency, do you have open house? We have open houses once a quarter, but mm -hmm. people can walk in anytime they want. We are very open to having visitors come and see what we do and see the people there and see them in a different light, that they're not these frail, old, 
demented people sitting in a chair, drooling, or whatever the, the stereotype may be. These are engaged, incredible human beings who actually shaped the city of Berkeley and Oakland and this, this Bay Area, and um, they're amazing. Yes. Tell yeah. us what activities would take place every oh, day. Oh, wow. They, they go, uh, you know, they paint. Oh. They they make things like they made for you, Miss Sally. What did so, they make? So, <laughs> <laughs> so we are really into recycling. Oh yes. And so these are all of the magazines that my daughter kept coming to my house, even though she's in college, mm -hmm. and I don't read them. So I took them to the center, and they made um, purses out of them. How nice! So these are incredible purses out of um, wonderful newspaper. Oh. Um, and magazines, and so this was made for you oh. by the participants in our Berkeley program. How sweet, let me see. Now I'll just have to put this on my arm. There when you go. I go shopping, I can say this was made by the uh, residents of the Alzheimer's yeah, uh, of services. Asap. Yeah, How yeah. nice. Yeah. Now you had something else here you wanted to show. Was it a well, brochure? Well, this is just a, a little card that we have that we, you know, we do a brochure, but this little card just really talks about all of the services that we have. It, you know, we are in adult day health care, so when people come to our program, they get um, all the medical care, oh. they get also um, meals, exercise, therapy, we go to A's games, we go to concerts, we do all kinds of things. And then, uh -huh. you know, there's also support groups, education and training, and then like you, uh -huh. um, I also have a broadcast called Life is a Sacred Journey on Blog Talk Radio where we really talk about aging and and I have people from all over the world come and talk about aging in a new construct. Wonderful, so that's wonderful. that's what this card is all about. Good, good. Yeah. Now is there anything else you'd like to put out before the children come on and join us? They each are going to ask you a question. So be our guest of anything else you'd like to put out. Well, I brought a poem because I oh, wanted good. to be um, I wanted to be in partnership with the younger people because you told me that they were going to um, write poems. poems and uh -huh. so I want to say, first of all, they were magnificent poems. Did they write a uh, wonderful poem? They did an poems? excellent job. I love yes. young people. Uh, but this was a poem that was written by one of our participants. His name is Rocco. Okay. And Rocco um, loves music. Oh, good. And so the poem, the title is Poem About Music. I love music. It makes my heart feel lighter. I love music. It makes the world seem all the brighter. I love it in the morning. I love it in the day. I love it in the night. I love music because it keeps me feeling right. Keep the music playing. Keep the music playing. Everything else is our enemy if we don't have the light of music. Isn't that wonderful? So, yeah. Well, you tell him that we, you will. read his poem. I will. <laughs> and maybe maybe one day he'd like to come and be on the show. Well, you never know. And you, you never know, know when I get my DVD, I'm going to show it to him. So, yeah. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and yes. then the children are going to join us. But that was wonderful. Thank you. Now, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen and adults, don't you turn off those TVs. We're going to take a quick break, and our three poets are going to join us, and then they're going to have some questions. So we'll be back in just a moment. And now our poets have joined us, and they each have some questions, so here we go. First question. Why did you want to be the CEO of the Alzheimer? I didn't want to be the CEO, but um, after much convincing from the board and different people in my community, I decided that it would be a really good thing for me to do. Great. Good yeah. question. Next question. Why did you decide to join Alzheimer's? I joined the organization because I was um, a hospital administrator in New York City and I had children your age about and I realized that um, I wasn't spending enough time with my children and so I wanted a job where I could do a whole lot of work during the day and be home at night so um, I got offered the position and I moved out here to California. Great. Next question please. Why, why did you how did, wait, when people forget 
um, how do they um, lose it for a long, little bit of time? The, the people who have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's remember their lives like when they were your age, but they don't remember uh, sort of like yesterday or what they had for breakfast in that morning or dinner or anything like that. So their long-term memory is really fantastic, but it's their short-term memory that they lose. Mm -hmm. Next question, please. Do you like being the CEO of the Alzheimer? I do. I love being the CEO of Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's services because I get to work with incredible people and I get to meet people who have done incredible things in their lives. Good. Next yeah. question, please. What places have you traveled to? I've been to Cuba, I've been to Bali, Indonesia, uh, France, uh, Guatemala, Africa. I've been a lot of places. Yeah. Which was your favorite country? My favorite was Cuba. Cuba. Oh, yeah, that's good. I, I enjoyed Cuba very, very much. Good. Yeah. Next question, please. How, how many places did you go? I've been to a lot of places um, because I work with the World Health Organization in studying aging and diabetes and all that kind of stuff. So I get to travel a lot of places. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. What would you like to say to the children about their poetry? I think your poetry was amazing. Um, I think that you are incredible young people who are walking along this world and really seeing what's going on. I know you have fun and I know you play and I know you do all that, but your eyes are open and you're seeing what's happening in your neighborhood and what's around you. Your poetry was phenomenal. Thank Good. you for sharing it with us. Sorry well, is that. there anything else you'd like to put out to our audience? Like maybe they'd like to come and take a tour. If you'd like to quickly, it'll come up on the screen, but would you like to say that? Okay, so if there's anybody out there that needs any support or help, whether you are the person that diagnosed with any form of dementia or you're the caregiver or a family member or just a community concerned about your neighbor, please give us a call at 510-644-8292. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. You all did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. And I want you to go back to school and tell the rest of their, your classmates that they can come too and be on We Poets three at a time. And you did a wonderful job. I'm very, very proud of each and every one of you. Yeah, and too. thank you so much oh, for coming. Welcome. And I'd like to have you come back again and talk about your radio program. I'd love to do that. And your radio program, what's the title of Life it? Life is a Sacred Journey. And what's it about? Life is a sacred journey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're going to learn more about yeah. that too. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you guys so much for coming. Let's all wave goodbye to our watching audience. Goodbye, everybody, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Yeah.